Everything is limited when you're talking about a place of unlimited joy. And one of the things that we learned from the Prophet وسلم, is that everything we're talking about with Jannah here is just enough for us to long for it, just enough for us to know that the promise of Allah is true. But not only is the promise of Allah true in what He has told us about, the promise of Allah is true that there is so much more that He hasn't yet told us about. The Prophet وسلم, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, I have prepared for my righteous slaves what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human imagination can possibly grasp. And then the Prophet وسلم, said, Recite if you wish, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ No person knows what is kept hidden for them of joy, as a reward for that which they used to do. And in one version narrated by Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Wasallam said, never mind what Allah has told you, what He has not told you is even greater. SubhanAllah, just seize that sentence for a moment. Never mind what Allah has told you, what He has not told you is even greater. Everything that we've been speaking about, there are things that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has not even told us about yet, that are even greater. And the Prophet وسلم, when he tells us about the way we've been gathering, invoking Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, crying for Jannah, begging Allah for Jannah, begging Allah for forgiveness, begging Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to protect us from the punishment, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala asks those angels, what are they asking me for? And they say, Ya Rabb, they're asking you for Jannah. They're asking you for paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, and he knows the answer. Have they seen Jannah? And they would say, no, Ya Allah, they haven't seen it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, how would it be if they saw it? And they say, they would be even more eager for it. And they would ask you with even more sincerity. SubhanAllah, it's like Allah is boasting to the angels about the degree of love and talab, the way we're asking him for this Jannah, even though we have never seen it. And that is a proof that we don't need to see more to connect with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, the way that He's given us the capability to. You push yourself in the month of Ramadan and in other seasons to ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, And I ask you after a season of connecting to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, don't you feel Him more? Don't you believe more in Jannah? Aren't you more afraid of the fire? Aren't you more connected to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala? And when we come to that part of what are the things of Jannah we haven't even heard about? You know, just like there are too many degrees in Jannah to know, and there are only some names of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala that have been disclosed to us. Yes, only some names of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Other than the 99, we are going to learn things about Allah that we did not know about in this dunya. We're going to learn names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we didn't even know in this dunya. Just as all that we are encountering in this life is only one mercy of the 100 parts of Allah's mercy. I want you to think about that. There are 99 parts of Allah's mercy that He has saved for the Akhirah. We don't even know what those 99 parts of mercy look like. Think about that one part of mercy and how we are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that. And all of the mercy in this world, the mercy that Allah shows to us, the mercy that we show to each other, the love that we have for one another, all of that is encompassed in just one mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how about the other 99? So when you talk about Jannah, how about the things that you haven't heard about yet? And the point is, is that you just want to be forgiven. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us that when we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Sayyidul Istighfar, the chief of seeking forgiveness, Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa ant, khalaqtani wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. There is no God but you. You created me and I am your slave. And I'm doing my absolute best to fulfill the covenant that I have taken to you. 
أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت I seek refuge in you from the sins that I have committed I admit to you my shortcomings I admit to you your favors upon me So forgive me, O Allah, because no one forgives except for you. SubhanAllah, this dua is an acknowledgement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given me so much and that I acknowledge my shortcomings in regards to those blessings. And the Prophet said that whoever makes this dua during the day with firm belief in it and then dies on the same day before the evening, that he will be one of the inhabitants of Jannah. And if he makes this dua, with firm belief in the evening and then dies before the morning, he will be one of the dwellers of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always mentions forgiveness and expiation of sin in the Quran before entrance into Jannah. Because the only barrier you have is your sins. You were meant to go home and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will please you when you get there. And sometimes just like you don't know what the exact reward is going to be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah, you also don't know which deed is going to qualify you for his mercy and get you into Jannah. It could be the smallest sincere deed that you do that unlocks all of these treasures, but you don't know, so you keep at it. But it is only by his mercy that we enter with even the most blessed and the biggest of deeds. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed two things within two things. He's concealed his awliya, his close friends amongst his servants. So you don't know which one amongst you is a wali of Allah. You might be watching this and thinking, I can't be this person, I can't be that person, that shaykh, that shaykh. You might be the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ali radiallahu anhu is talking about. And he said, and Allah has concealed his rida, his pleasure within his good deeds. So you don't know which good deed you're going to do that unlocks his pleasure in his paradise. And so you keep at it. Finally, Imam Ibn Ata'illah rahimahullah has a beautiful hikmah, beautiful wisdom that he talks about in regards to our limitations in being able to grasp what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us and our limitations in being able to enjoy the reward of Jannah if Allah were to give it to us, even if he were to give it to us in this dunya. إِنَّمَا جَعَلَ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ مَحَلًّا لِجَزَاءِ عِبَادِهِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لأن هذه الدار لا تسع ما يريد أن يعطيهم ولأنه أجل أقدارهم عن أن يجازيهم في دار لا بقاء لها That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the hereafter the place that he's going to reward his believing servants because this dunya can't fit what Allah wants to give you. It's too small, it's too limited for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give you. And even if Allah could give you here what He's promising you there, He has honored you too much to give you His reward in an abode that is meant to perish. And so instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you a reward you can't imagine in a paradise that will never end. <laughs> ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي